One study showed that what kids ask of parents the most, they thought it was going to be more time or whatever. They said kids want their parents to be less stressed. Let's talk about moms. So far too many moms have what I call a perfection complex. We think we have to do everything right all the time, which is kind of ridiculous. So what's the best advice we can give moms to let that go, both in their relationship with their partner and with their kids? The biggest gift we can give our kids is the gift of imperfection. We wow. as moms are straddling a canyon. We're on the precipice with our right foot and our families and our left foot in our careers and if we stretch just the littlest bit further, we're gonna fall in. That's the picture of maternal perfectionism today. And I really know it because I've got two teens with learning differences. So I practice triage. Just like an ER, I take the first things first, I stay in the moment. And I love my kids, which we all do, but I try not to bring the pressure out because they get pressure at school from their coaches, from their teachers, mm -hmm. from their friends. If we're there for them and try to be good enough moms, not shouldering guilt, not shouldering burden, creating memories instead of GPAs, I absolutely promise you that a year from now, our children are not gonna be remembering what was on the report card. They will remember being with you, building a snowman, creating a sand castle. That, I think, is how to get out of perfection. One study showed that what kids ask of parents the most, they thought it was going to be more time or whatever. They said kids want their parents to be less stressed. Uh -huh. So kids are seeing this and it trickles down. So I loved your idea of the sandcastle. That just sounds like a great visual. Yeah, if I'd say three things, I'd say partnering, pr uh, prioritizing, and pretending. First of all, you need a partner. And it doesn't have to be a love partner or a husband or a wife. It can be, but you know, girlfriends or you can't do this alone. It was never intended to, to do it alone. And the second one is prioritizing. Some things in life you can do anytime. Some things you could only do once. This yeah. is it. Pretend it's perfect. You know, <laughs> pretend it. You can have you can have anything in life. You just can't have it all at one time. When you said right. pretend, I thought she meant at first that you should get down on the floor and pretend with them. <laughs> that too. No, that would yeah, be good. That I would, would be good. I would, not I bad, love doing you know, that even now. I've got idea. two teenagers. Yeah, so pretend like do. it's perfect, you know? Well, I think that perfection feeds into that idea that, you know, when we're talking about perfectionism, we're really judging. And to allow our children to just try it and fail if necessary, and but still keep the judgment to yourself. Perfectionism reminds me, and I think when moms do this to ourselves, because we do, we love to harbor that guilt. And when we do this to ourselves, we need to think about what we do for our children. The ball game, where they stand up to bat, they take the swing, good cut you know, good catch, even when they lose the game. I think we need to do that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Even when we haven't succeeded to the level we want to, let's don't judge ourselves so harshly and let go of that perfectionism like that. Yeah. yeah we're yeah. human. And Absolutely. we're meant to be imperfect, not perfect. Which yes. doesn't, that has nothing to do with an abusive relationship. But if it's a normal, healthy relationship, our kids are gonna forgive us our mistake. Let's we not forget. Kathy, I love the part where you talk about memories. Kids grow up and we remember what happened when, with who, what you did, what you didn't do, and those memories are so important. And I think when the kids grow up, that's when you can have the better relationships because they were okay in childhood. So we're not just talking about just the little ones growing up here, we're talking about relationship with our kids. And even though they grow up, they are still our kids, even as adults. And so the memories are so important, mm -hmm. the, the memories mm -hmm. are, priceless when it comes to just doing, just being in the moment and remembering times that are precious that you cannot recapture again, that yeah. can, might, yeah. uh, might happen only once. And some of the best, best memories, Barbara, are the ones that weren't perfect. Absolutely. I mean, think about the, yes. the funniest the family stories. stories. Yes. Exactly. Yes. In fact, I read a study the other day that said, when you make a plan and it goes just like you planned it, it's like it never happened. It evaporates. Boring. So it's, it, it's so perfect. You're mechanical. Yes, yeah. It's highly overrated. And it people, is. those of us who are perfectionists, 
tend to expect perfection in others. So and we true. know what pressure yes. that yes. puts on mm -hmm. But on I think kids. perfectionism to some degree is very adaptive. It, it causes us to strive for more, strive for better. Yeah. But it's again, when I think back to that judgment factor that says, even if you tried your best, you want to do like your kids, you know, say pat on the back, good try, good try. We need to, as moms, do that for ourselves. Yeah. Just don't be rigid in your Ab perfection. Absolutely, yeah. because it can drive us yes. and motivate us as well. Yeah. So it sounds like what the panel is saying is that for moms that are struggling with perfection, the answer is to let it go. Model the behavior for your kids you want to see in them, but start with you. Take a chill pill, you know, take care of yourself, get on the floor and play with them and start to have fun.